Oh, would you look at the date, April 14th, the day in which every social media is flooded with only the most creative and tasteful April 14th covers. But why? Why does every April 14th inspire so many to cover and put their own spin on the classic Apex Twin track? In order to find that out, we need to document the history of the song and how its appeal and reception has changed over time. April 14th was released in October 2001 and was featured on the Drugs album by Apex Twin. The album spans many genres and styles of electronic music and is an odd choice to jumble all together as an album. This will be a sentiment shared by Apex Twin. He never wanted to release the project as an album, however was forced to after he left an MP3 player filled with unreleased music on a plane. He knew that eventually somebody was going to figure out what it was and release it online. But before that could happen, Apex Twin slapped it all together and called it a drugs. Boom. Album. The album wouldn't really be promoted either after release. There were little interviews, although there isn't odd for Apex Twin. No music videos, not even an appearance from Robert Johnny. Richard is a very private man, especially creatively, and not much has been said about how Avril 14th was actually made. Although, his most devoted fans have come to the conclusion that the song was made with a disclavia. A Disclavia is a piano that has a mechanism that is able to read MIDI data and automatically play based off that. It actually produces a faint clicking sound you can hear if you listen closely to the track. The benefit of an instrument like this is that it can play anything with incredible accuracy, even something that would be almost impossible for a human to play. Although Drux received a mixed response after release, it pretty immediately gained a devoted audience of people within different media industries. A group of classical musicians would rearrange the album for orchestra, specifically citing Avril 14th as a gorgeous song due to the choice of notes. Avril 14th would again receive attention when the scoring for the 2006 film Mary Antoinette would begin. The film was a period piece, however, featured mainly contemporary music from the likes of Square Pusher and The Cure. The composer felt Avril 14th was the perfect song to bridge the gap between contemporary and classical. Apex Twin would be invited to compose more songs for the film, although declined, citing that he wasn't comfortable making art that is designed to fit into something else. Avril 14th would later rear its head into the mainstream in 2007, where a chopped up version of the song would be featured on Saturday Night Live. In September 2007, the president of Iran would, would denounce homosexuality in a speech. In response, the musical comedy trio The Lonely Island would respond with the song Iran So Far, which was a comedic love song directed at the Iranian president. Andy Samberg would rap over a chopped up version of Avril 14th that had laid dormant on the producer's computer for years. SNL would decide to completely ignore the legal department and ended up having to pay Apex Twins label $160,000. This wouldn't be the first time Avril 14th was quote unquote borrowed, only this time it was by a force more powerful than you can imagine. Kanye West was on the first of his many redemption arcs, recording My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy in Hawaii. Avril 14th would be used as a sample for the song Blame Game. He would originally use a disgustingly time-stretched version of the song. This would be sent to Apex Twin for permission. Apex Twin would actually offer to re-record the song at a different tempo to perfectly fit the song. Of course, you'd assume Kanye would accept, who wouldn't accept the assistance of literal Richard D. James. Well, you'd be completely wrong. West's team would respond with, it's not yours, it's ours, and we're not even asking you anymore. Seems like a completely normal way to respond to somebody offering assistance. This hissy fit would continue as they would try to avoid paying or even crediting Apex Twin. The final song would use a re-recorded version of Avril 14th. It's also worth noting that Kanye West was actually present at the same SNL around so far was played at, so it's likely West actually got inspiration for use of the sample from Lonely Island, which I find fucking hilarious. Obviously these consensual and non-consensual flurries into the mainstream were starting to push the beautiful piece of music to more and more people. This would explode with the rise in popularity of streaming services. The record label Silent Star would approach British pianist Michael Jacoby, asking him to record covers for a compilation of relaxing pieces of music. This would include Avril 14th. This version would eventually appear on a vast amount of search-friendly compilations, such as Sleepy Lullaby, Studying Music, and Best Songs to Do. The cover would extend to many different platforms such as Spotify, YouTube, and Apple Music. This trend continued with other interpretations, ranging from clean cut piano covers to dreamy atmospheric covers to whatever the f this is. This had exposed the song to the world of classical music fans, but we all know this isn't the extent of Avril 14th enjoyers. In order to understand the song's appeal with electronic and more contemporary music fans, we need to understand the influence and legend that is Apex Twin. Most people consider Aphex Twin one of, if not the most influential figure in electronic music. This would all start with the release of a selected ambient works 85-92 in 1992, which would immediately receive widespread acclaim. 
Before this, the world of electronic music was full of repetitive 4-bar loop techno music. This album was different, adding subtle atmosphere and texture alongside gorgeous melodies and a range of songs that were interesting and varied. This album is commonly considered as the birthplace of modern electronic music. This experimentation wouldn't stop, however. Apex Twin would continue to release experimental and strange songs that would often receive mainstream attention and critical acclaim. This would lead to a generation of electronic music producers that cite Apex Twin as not only inspiring the sound of their music, but the song structure and overall aesthetic. This influence combined with Apex Twin's mysterious nature, rarely given interviews or performing live, unless it's some these, weird these. like this, meant that Apex Twin has remained in the hearts of every electronic music producer for generations. But that's just me babbling on about the history of the song and Richard himself. What actually makes Avril 14th so special? The topic you actually clicked on this video for? And why does it remain in the forefront of people's minds? Compared to Apex Twin's discography, Avril 14th is incredibly accessible and can be appreciated by most music listeners, but I don't think this even scratches the surface. Due to the way the song was recorded, the song sounds very human but not quiet. There's a weird mechanical element to it, like an AI playing piano long before ChatGPT. Perhaps scratching the uncanny valley side of the human brain, but I also don't think this is the reason. I kind of just made that up. Another reason could be how prevalent the song has been in mainstream culture for over two decades now. When something is consistently featured in films, sampled by superstars and ejected to study playlists, it has to make an impact on people who may not even be originally interested in Apex Twin or electronic music. This prevalence means a random Kanye or, I don't know, Marie Antoinette enjoyer will instantly recognise a song if they stumble across it and perhaps continue to spread it to a constantly expanding audience. Although I believe this plays a part in the song's popularity and legacy, none of this would be possible if the song itself wasn't amazing. I think the answer to this question has to lay in the music. The song is a simple but incredibly beautiful piece of piano music, which is something that will always be timeless. Every electronic music fan has compared the likes of Square Pusher to, for example, Igloo Ghost, and seen the works of early electronic music producers as a product of their time. Still amazing, but easily outdone by modern technology, at least when it comes to complexity. Avril 14th is completely void of this. As the decades progress, anyone can listen to Avril 14th and not think of the time period of its creation, or even how it was made. Just get lost in the beauty and simplicity. It's also very easy to download the MIDI for Avril 14th and just place a Crazy Frog sample over it, so that's probably the reason as well. Just so you know, it's currently 11.26pm on April 13th. I've just finished writing this video, I completely forgot it was April 14th until a few hours ago, so if this seems a little bit rushed, it kind of is, I'm going to give Apex Twin an IDM more attention in the future, they definitely deserve it, I just didn't want to wait another year to make this video.